Hello everyone! In today's video I want to show you how you connect to a OPC UA server, get data from a machine and create a time frame based on machine states. For this, in the Peakboard Designer, I will start by clicking on Data, Add Data Source and I will select the OPC UA data source. I will call this machine state because we will just get the states of a machine later. I will use an already existing connection, but of course you could also just enter your connection details on the top. Now I'll click here on Manage Subscriptions. This will connect me to my OPC UA server and here I can just select the data I want to have. In that case it's the Workstation 7 and here I want to select the status. I click on Select and here I can click on the Enable Listener button, which will uh, directly offer me the live data of the OPC UA server. I click on OK and now I've created the OPC UA data source. So next, I want to add a variable list to store the historical information of the machine. So I will call this Machine History. Here I will create three columns, one for the timestamp, one for the state and one which is a number column for the duration where I will set the seconds of this state. Now we'll click on the OK button and as next I will add a time data source because we need to calculate with time later. So I click on a data source and I select time, I just call it my time. Now I click on the OPC UAA data source and I click here on the refresh script. So that's a script which is every time running when, uh, when data changes in the OPC UAA server. On that place I will start by adding a building block with an if. Here the first thing I uh, want to do is check if there is already an uh, item in my machine history list. So I go here to list aggregation and I go on count and just place that one here. And if there is already an item, then it will be bigger than zero. So I will compare that to zero. Just place that one here. In that case, uh, if there is already an entry, then we need to manipulate the existing entry because uh, with the next uh, state change we get, we can set the duration of the state before. So for that, I will just go here on the right, uh, on the right side to variable list, and I uh, I say set value in first or last row, and I want to set a number value because I want to change the duration. So here I select machine history and I want to change the duration of the last row. Let me, move, let me remove the zero. Now things get a little bit complicated, but I will explain it to you. Now I go to date and I say um, I want to get the date difference. So I just place that one here and I want first to use the current date. So for that I go here to time and get date and I just place that one on the first position. From that I want to subtract, subtract the timestamp we added before to that list. So here I go to parse date, place that one here and um, I will remove that part and I go here to text and say merge and put that one here. So what I want to do here is go back to the last row of my uh, of my machine history list and again I will select the value of the last row so I go here on string value of the last row so set it to last row And what I need to do here is I also need to add the date for my time data source. The reason why I need to do this is um, that uh, that 
we don't store the date completely in, in the list later, but just the time. But to compare it on the left hand, we also have the date, but in the, in the machine history, just, we just have the time. So we also need to add the current date here. I can just do that like here uh, with year, month and day. And so, so the format will be hour, minute, second. This three I will get from the first part and then year, month and day, which I will get from the, the uh, time data source. So the next thing is I will add a new row when things changed here, the state changed in the OPC UA server. So I will go back here to variable lists and I will say um, list manipulation and I want to add a row at the end. So the duration is not calculatable right now. I will do that then later in this part we already did here. The state is what I get from my OPC UA server in this message and the timestamp I will just get from my, uh, from my time data source. So I go here and I select get date as text. And now maybe things get a little bit clearer what we did above. Um, here I just set the, uh, the hour, minutes and seconds, but not the date. That's why we lose it in the list and why we add it here above again for the comp uh, for comparing the two dates. So I'm done with that. I can click here on save and close. And what I can do now is uh, just placing the OPC UA data source here as a table, just to make it possible to check what is inside there. Also, I will place here my data history as a table to see what happens here. Um, and the last thing I want to do is go to charts and I will select this timeline grid, place it here on the bottom and resize it a bit. Now I can, map, uh, I can um, connect it to the machine history by selecting the data source. Um, I also, oh, that's wrong here. Now I can, uh, for the caption, I can select the timestamp. For the column, I will select the state because the state is the reason how the color will be. And for the duration, um, like it's already done, the duration. I click now here on the mapping button and I will create here three mappings. One, when we get running from OPC UA, then we set the color to green. One, when we get idle, then we will set the color to yellow and one when we get an error, then we will just set it to red. I click here on OK. I will now click on preview button to see how we get data from OPC UA and how we can show it. Thanks for watching and in the next video, I want to show you how we don't just store the data on the Peakboard box, but also storing them uh, in the Peakboard hub for long-term analysis and also to uh, keep the data there on a the server. See you then.